Hi everyone, Paul from Vita. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about our Accent LC, Light Cure Stain and Glaze. I just got back from IDS and I got the opportunity to work with a couple of our Vita Academy trainers that are really exceptional technicians. Julian Garduño from France and Axel Apfel from Germany. They showed me a couple of their techniques which I really liked and wanted to share with you guys. I've talked before about our Accent LC and I said that as long as you're getting the results you're looking for, there's really no wrong way to use these. But what it doesn't give you is a good starting point. So I'm hoping today to show you that and give you guys at least a place to start and then work from there. So let's take a look at that. Let's start by talking about a couple of different ways that you can characterize dentures gingiva. This is an example that I did earlier and I'll show you guys how I got there. Uh, I've prepared the gingiva here uh, by lightly sandblasting it. You can also use uh, a rubber wheel or something like that. Uh, we just want to make sure and break any kind of glaze on the surface and give ourselves a little bit of mechanical retention. I'm also going to keep this very simple. Uh, so I'm only using four colors. So what you guys can see here is I've got uh, my glaze. I've got our dark red, pink, and purple. Uh, the one that's missing is cream and I'll come back to it in a minute and show you guys. Now both of these techniques start with a base layer of glaze. And the idea here is just to, we just want to wet the surface. It'll help give us a base to start with. And it will also help reduce the surface tension so that our colors go down more evenly and smoothly. Now, the way that Axel does it is, I really like it for something that you're gonna need to do um, that's very quick and very subtle and the way that he does it is he, he does his base layer here in the glaze and he'll leave it wet and then he'll jump over and add his start adding some color and what you can see happens here because it's wet it will diffuse a little bit and spread out and again uh, it go down really quick and it's very subtle but it makes a big difference uh, I can also use a little bit of my pink here if I need to around the teeth I can also mix the two a little bit if I need to get a little darker and then also I'm going to use a little bit of the purple real lightly down here at the bottom and so you guys can see that leaving it wet and adding those colors we can do a very quick gingival characterization. So I really like that one for, uh, like I said, for, for something that's quick and very subtle, that's a, that's a great technique. That's uh, axles. Here, let me cure this one real quick. And there we can see after curing it, again, a very subtle characterization of the gingiva. Now, the way that Julian does it, is he starts with a base just like Axel does except that he cures his base before he lays down any color and his technique is more to uh, cure between layers he does several layers in between so let me go ahead and cure this run real quick. And there, after we've cured it, you can see we have a very similar effect, but 
It takes a little longer and a couple more steps, but you can also see how we can really get a lot more characterization doing it this way uh, by doing it in layers. Now that I've cured that one, I'm going to add a little bit of the purple like I did on the other one down here at the bottom. And there we go. I like that effect. Looks really nice. Let me cure it real quick. Now, one of the other ways that we can use this too is you notice when it comes out of the bottle, it comes out very thin. Um, and it will start to set up. That's what the little covers are for, is so that uh, just the light in the room doesn't uh, get it to set up. But it will, after a while, get kind of uh, tacky or sticky. And you can actually let it, like this one here, I've let it dry out a little bit so that it has gotten a little sticky. And with this, what I can do is give a couple of really cool kind of effects, that it goes down slightly differently when it's sticky like that. And so if you're looking for something that's more like uh, the fibers that you're used to, um, this is another cool way to do that also. Kind of streak it through here. It'll go down and lay down kind of like the fibers that you're used to seeing in a denture's gingiva or in the mouth. There you go. Let's tack this one. Mixing the colors with a little bit of cream to give it some opacity also works really well if you're trying to um, turn a monoblock try-in into a temporary, which you totally can do. Uh, what I found on this one, the techniques that works the best is uh, Julian's technique, which is to do several layers. Um, but if you mix it with that cream and give it the opacity, it will cover this white and you'll get the really nice pink on there. Uh, but it works best when you do it in some layers. Uh, and then you can also characterize the teeth, which I will show you next. Okay. So now for characterizing the teeth, I've got white, blue, and this is chroma. For today I'm using chroma A, but you can use whatever matches the case you're using. And then I've got my glaze here. So only two colors and some chroma, so it's even simpler than the gingiva one. So again, I'm going to start with a layer of my glaze. And then I'm going to put down a little bit of color. Now, this I've always found to be the really tricky part because the way I was taught is that if you can see the color, then you have too much. But of course, the question I always get is, if I can't see the color, then how do I know any is on there? And when I was discussing this with Julian, he had to remind me that we're not looking for color, we're looking for an effect. And so this is the way that I've come to do it myself. And that is, I like to lay down a little bit of color so that I know I've got some on there. So I know that I have some color. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of massage it in there until the color disappears and the effect shows up. Hopefully you guys can see there, we don't have any more blue, but now we've got a little bit of incisal translucency. All right, and you also notice that I didn't go all the way to the edge. I went about eh, half a millimeter or so down. And you can massage it in there wherever you like. And then, I'm going to come back with some of my white 
on the lingual side at about a 45 degree angle to that cusp tip. And I'm going to give just, just a little bit there. And that'll give us kind of a backdrop for that blue and give us kind of that halo effect. And if we end up having a little bit come over the top, and give us some extra characterization, that's okay too. And then finally, I'm going to come in with my chroma. And really you can do this either way. You can either do your chroma first or you can do your color first. It doesn't matter. It's totally a personal preference. And I always add a little bit in the interproximals and then down here at the base. We don't want it too even, so we're going to kind of, again, massage it in there until we get it where we like it. And I think I'm going to tack it, see where it's at, and see if I need to add any more. And there we go, that's starting to look pretty good. So let's uh, finish off a couple of adjacent teeth here. Again, a little bit in the interproximals, a little bit down here. I like the way that's starting to look. Again, let's add a little bit of our blue. There, I can see that I've got color. Now I'm going to massage it in till the color goes away and the effect shows up. I like that. Maybe a little bit here on our canine just for fun, and a little bit with our white, and again let's tack it and see what that looks like. It's really starting to look pretty good. So to finish it off, I'm going to give it one last coat of glaze, and I'm going to glaze the whole thing and this glaze coat is just meant to make it shiny you do you don't want to get it too thick that uh, these accent stains are actually the base of them is this glaze it's just the glaze with pigment so We've already got plenty of material on there. We just want this thin layer to give it a nice shiny glaze coat. And there we go. So let's give that a quick tack. And there we go. Our final coat of glaze. We've got our characterization. And it looks very nice and shiny. One more trick that Julian taught me is uh, after you've glazed it, done the final glaze, and have cured it completely, just before you're done with it, if you take a small buffing wheel like this and very slow and very lightly across here, it will give uh, this glaze a kind of a high shine and really make it pop. It looks amazing. So hopefully that has given you guys a good place to start and answered some of your questions. If you guys have more questions, of course, please contact us at Vita North America or check out our Vita North America YouTube page uh, for other videos and techniques. Thanks a lot and you guys have a great day.